So let's talk about the central limit theorem, sampling distributions in the world of proportions today. Now, proportions, let's take a minute to really um, to really dive in to what proportions um, really are because we haven't worked with them very much, if at all, lately. Mm. Actually, I don't think we've worked with them at all. <laughs> so it's probably a good idea that we discuss what they are. So let me actually switch to the whiteboard first. And let's take some notes. So proportions, as I call them different worlds. So there's the world of the means and there's the world of the proportions. Now, the means are for quantitative data. We can add up quantitative data and divide up uh, divide by how many data points we have and get an average, a mean. But proportions are used with qualitative data. Okay, so remember qualitative is categorical. I'm talking about categories. So for example, let's say we were looking at the whole world of M&Ms. Okay, so this is the M&M population. So if you think of it, and it's kind of fun to think about, um, think of a world of a room, a really big warehouse room that is holding all the M&Ms that um, currently exist in the world today. So we know that there are red M&Ms, so we can picture a bunch of red M&Ms, and we know that there are green M&Ms, and that there are blue M&Ms, I think. Yes, I haven't had M&Ms in I don't know how long, so um, I might miss some. Um, there are maybe orange M&Ms. If not, there's brown ones. I know that. I know there's yellow ones. I don't think there's purple. I think purple are Skittles. <laughs> um, maybe I'm missing some. I'm not sure. I know there's brown. We'll put brown and gray. I don't actually have a brown option on here. Okay, so again, we're picturing this room filled with all the different M&Ms, and let's say that we are talking about what is the proportion of red M&Ms. So there's some proportion P, this is the population proportion, is population proportion, which is denoted by little p, and that, let's say we're focused on the red M&Ms, so it would be all the red M&Ms, the count of red, count of red over the total number of M&Ms. That's how we get a proportion, the part over the whole. So we've actually been doing proportions, um, relative frequencies are proportions, probabilities, part over the whole. So. We were curious of these red M&Ms are what proportion of the total M&Ms. Now, let's say that we wanted to calculate a probability about this proportion. We wanted to find out what is the probability. Okay, so we want to ask, what is the probability that the proportion of red M&Ms, so the proportion of red, will be greater than, hmm, let's go with 20%. Okay, well, right now we have colors, red, blue, green, whatever. We can't take a proportion, we can't calculate probability on qualitative individual data values, which is where the sampling distribution comes in. So, Picture this population completely mixed, a room of mixed M&Ms, how you normally see it when you open up a bag of M&Ms, and let's create a sampling distribution. So the rules for a sampling distribution for, um, for proportions is a little different from the means. Um, remember the means, you have to take sample sizes of 30 or greater, unless you know that it stems from a normally distributed population. With qualitative data, it is less likely that we're going to know what the distribution is um, because it's qualitative, so it's a little bit more difficult to um, plot individual 
categorical values and find out the distribution of the data. So we have to follow the rules that the sample size we choose when we multiply that by the proportion, okay, by the population proportion, we are looking for that to be greater than or equal to five. And we have to also do n times one minus, okay, or n times q, the complement of um, the population proportion, and that also has to come out bigger than five. That's how we'll know if our sample size is large enough. Okay, so let's say that, um, let me just do this hypothetically because uh, we don't, I don't have the actual population proportion for red M&Ms, so I don't want to just make it up. But, um, so we dive in and we grab, let's say we're grabbing sizes of uh, 100 M&Ms at a time. In each one of these samples that we grab, okay, N1, N2, N3, each one of these samples, we are going to count how many red M&Ms are in the sample and divide by the sample size. So X over N is the formula for P hat, okay? So P hat is the sample proportion. So out of the 100, it will tell me the proportion of red m and So we'll have a P hat one, um, we'll calculate a P hat two, actually this one was supposed to be three, and a P hat two, P hat one, two and three, and so on. We keep doing that, you keep diving in. It's an infinite grab of 100 m and So we get all these P hats. Now, just like the means, the X bars formed a standard normal curve or a normally distributed curve, I should say, not a standard normal curve. And that's exactly what's gonna happen with these P hats. So these P hats, will form a normally distributed curve by the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem says that the average of these proportions will be equal to the population proportion always. That's never going to change. And the standard error for the proportions is calculated by a big square root of P times one minus P divided by N. Now, just like when we were working with the means, we have to calculate the standard error for proportions first before heading to our guru um, so we can type it in correctly. So this is the, what we need to know about the central limit theorem for proportions. And that includes that checking our sample size is big enough. So again, that was N times P needs to be bigger than five and N times one minus P also needs to be bigger than five. Okay, let's head back to the PowerPoint and let's work through some of this stuff. So it hopefully will make sense. Okay. So the formula for our P hat is X, which is the count of the desired data value over the total in the sample. So for my example, it would have been the count of red M&Ms out of the 100 M&Ms we sampled. And P hat is pronounced P hat, okay. The standard error for proportions, as I showed you, is a square root of P, which is the population proportion, times one minus P, which can also be denoted as Q, the complement of proportion P, divided by N, the sample size, and then you take a square root. So if the population is infinite and the sample is sufficiently large, the distribution of P hat has the following characteristics. Using the central limit theorem, it's approximately normal. The average of the P hats will always be equal to the same population proportion that we started with. Just like with the means, the mean of the means, the mu sub X bar was always equal to the original mean of the population. The center is never going to change. And the standard error is this formula, okay? It is, uh, sometimes we don't actually know the population proportion and we can default to P hat. So we always want to use the more accurate information if given um, and use less accurate as um, sparingly if we have to.
Okay, if the population is finite and the sample is sufficiently large, again, in order to check whether it's sufficiently large, you have to multiply n times p and get bigger than 5 and n times 1 minus p. Then the following characteristics are true. Here is that finite factor that we will have to use on the standard error if we have a finite population. Same thing as the means. So here's our example. Let's suppose a sample of 400 persons is used to perform a taste test. If the true fraction in the population that prefers Pepsi is really 0.5, what is the probability that less than 0.44 or 44% of the people in the sample will prefer Pepsi? So again, one of the first things that we're going to want to do is check that the sample size is big enough so if we take 400 and we multiply it by 0.5, we get 200. That is plenty big enough. And one minus, one minus 0.5 is 0.5, so it's the same exact thing, 200 and 200. Okay, so those calculations do work out. Um, we do get um, bigger than 5. And you know what? Let me write these down because I, sometimes verbally talking about math really doesn't connect well. At least it doesn't with me. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the sample size, which is 400, and I'm taking the population proportion of people who prefer Pepsi, which is 0.5, and I'm going to multiply n times p, so 400 times 0.5, which is 50% of 400, comes out to be 200. So that's greater than or equal to five, check. And n times one minus p, which is 400 times 1 minus 0.5, which is the same thing as multiplying by 0.5, because 1 minus 0.5 is 0.5, is also 200. Okay, so it's really important that we check the criteria for the central limit theorem, or the whole thing would not even be valid. Okay, so we have checked, we are good, um, and we then calculate our standard error, okay, 0 0.025, which we will use in our guru to calculate this probability. So coming over to our guru now, we come over here to the probability calculator in the continuous world, and we are calculating a probability where our mean is 0.5 and our standard error is 0 0.025. We are calculating the probability of below less than 0.44. And that gives us a very, very small probability. In fact, it's a less than 1% chance that the proportion of people who prefer Pepsi will be less than 44% of people. Now, one thing that I find that students find very confusing in the proportion problems is that everything's are decimals, okay? You're looking at the proportion being, uh, the, the probabilities being decimals, the proportions being decimals, the behats being decimals, the standard errors being decimals, everything are decimals. So um, you just have to be very careful about which decimal means what. So um, our probability of the proportion portion, okay, um, takes a little bit of practice. So if we take a look at this picture, we see that this represents the area that is the probability less than a 0 0.44 uh, portion of people who prefer Pepsi. You can see it's a very small area, less than 1%. With the information we have developed thus far, we can begin to draw conclusions or make inferences on the population. If the true fraction of people in the population who prefer Pepsi is really 50% or 0.5, it is extremely unlikely less than 1 in 100 to observe a sample proportion as low as 0.44. All right, second example, suppose we have a sample of 500 is used to estimate the fraction of voters that favor a particular candidate. If the population proportion that favors the candidate is really 0.4, what is the probability that the error of estimation will be less than 5%? Okay, so this is very um, similar to something that we did last week. So since the true value of the population proportion is assumed to be 0.4, the, 
the value of p hat must fall between 0.35 and 0.45. So what they're saying is here is what we know the population proportion is. And the question is asking about a sample proportion being within 5% of this population proportion. So how they got these numbers is they took 0 0.5, 0 0.05 and subtracted it from 0.4 to get 0.35 and added it to 0.4 to get 0.45. Okay, <clears throat> in order to determine the probability that p hat will fall in this interval, its distribution must be determined. Since the distribution of p hat is approximately normally distributed for large sample sizes, and the sample size is 400, which is quite large, the distribution of p hat will be approximately normal with a standard error equal to 0 0.0219 by doing this formula. You literally have to do this formula out to get your standard error. And our mu p hat, which can be written as the estimated value for p hat, is 0.4. So finding the probability that p hat is within 5% of the true mean, we are really finding the probability between 0.35 and 0.45. We don't have to go to Z scores. We don't have to use the standard normal. So if you see sometimes the Hawks learning homework will want you to do a little bit more work than you actually need to, our, our guru can calculate this at this point right here. So once we add and subtract the error margin, we just come over here, we change the mean to 0.4 and the standard error has been calculated at 0 0.0219. And we want a between we want to between those two proportions. So we type in 0 0.35 and 0 0.45, and we get the probability to be 0.97758. So there's a 98% chance that if we took a sample of 400, the p hat, the sample proportion, will be within 5% of the true mean of the population. So that's a very high probability. Um, that it will be um, within 5%. Well, and I guess that's the last example. So the um, I didn't put a lot of different examples in this particular section. Um, they're solved the same way of the means, um, except for this formula here and the n times p and n times 1 minus p that we need to do in order to check that the central limit theorem is even valid. And that concludes 9.4.